Hello prop makers and welcome to another Props 3D. This is Chris coming to you with a single action army rubber band gun that actually shoots six rubber bands single action the way it should. This model is available for free on the Props 3D Thingiverse page. The link is below, so click on it, download it, make it yourself and have fun. Before we get started though, let me show you how this works because it's a heck of a lot of fun. First off, you take a rubber band over the top and then over the post on the magazine. Works a little better if you pull the hammer back first so it doesn't put pressure on the rocker that's inside. I'll show you the rocker later when we put it together. There's the second one. And six, and it is ready to go. And now for my favorite part, the unloading. A lot more impressive if that was more than three feet away. So first thing we're going to need to do before we assemble this is go through the non 3D printed parts list. I tried to keep these to a minimum when I did the modeling, but I also realized this is a mechanical model, so it will maybe need servicing from time to time. So except for the cylinders on the side with the six screws, seven screws, sorry, I'm about to show you, you can completely disassemble and reassemble this at any time. So going through the parts from the bottom, got an M3 16 millimeter cap screw. This is to hold the grip on. Then we have three frame screws, M3 by 12. Then to hold the grip at the back, we've got some M3 by fours. You could also use M3 by six, also cap screws. One nut for the other side of the grip and then four 19 millimeter, one eighth inch rods. Oh, hold on, let me go grab something. There, this is the model you can print as well. It's included with the Thingiverse page files. This is a sizer, so you can take uh, this very cheap one eighth inch rod. This is just welding rod and insert it into the back here and then chop it right on this line and then you know perfect pins every time so now let's go through the 3d printed parts i have left the support material on this this is exactly straight off the print bed um, you will need to print these with supports i mean 3d printers are just glorified glue guns they don't print in the air and a mechanical model like this i could not make it support free so here we have the right side, left side of the frame printed this way down. This is a support material inside. It will be a little ugly when you take it out, but since they clamp together, it's not going to be visible. The barrel. This is the firing mechanism with the magazine. The spacer is here so you can print it face down and keep it nice and clean. The trigger, same thing. On the rocker, though, I, I just left it ugly. I don't care. This is going to be internal anyway. The cylinder just needs supports here on the top and the grip, little supports on the inside. So these are the tools I use to remove support material. Let's have a, a brief montage and I'll show you how I remove supports from models. All right, now we get all the support material cleaned away, we have to prep the holes. Now, 
the screw holes are self-tapping. I actually make them a little bit smaller than they need to be. And the reason for that is there's different tolerances and different printers. And if the holes come out too big for you, well, you're kind of hooped. Small, much easier to resize them. Uh, I, however, like to actually tap my holes in advance. Uh, you will see that both of these sides, move these out of the way, are different. This side here has um, the recess for the head of the screw and that one gets drilled out. And this one here is where the screw goes into and this one gets tapped out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is tap it with an M3 tap. Normally I would use a power tool, but you know, I thought I would use hand tools for the sake of this video. Just to show you, you can do it if you don't have power tools. Again, this is completely optional. If you just run the screw in, it will tap just fine by itself. This just makes the whole process a little smoother. All right, now I kind of wish I used to drill. All right, now that's all good. I'm gonna grab my little hand drill, and this is an M3 drill. Useful for drilling out M3 holes. This is much faster than the tap. Oh, one, two, three. Oh yeah, already done. And boop. Got all those holes ready. And then for the rods, sometimes they come out a little bit the wrong size. I'm actually using a quarter inch. Hold on, no, an eighth then, sorry, um, router bit here. And I am just, you can use an eighth inch drill bit. I just like the hole the router bit makes. It's got a bit of a taper at the top. This makes it easier to put the rod in after. Just do that. Now, before we do the other side, there is one gluing piece that needs to happen. I'm just gonna grab my super glue. I could have actually built this into the model, but I don't know, I like the idea of being able to print the cylinders in different colors. Oh, come on, there it goes. This is almost empty. Oh, my stollop of super glue. And then there's a bit of a recess to use as a guide here. All right. Oops, a little bit of a trap underneath there. There we go, that should be stuck down. Then get the other side. Glue it as well. Make sure that the loading gate is on the right hand side. I mean, if you're a lefty, maybe, but I have never seen a real loading gate on the other side. So, all right. Now we just got to drill out these. All right. Now, one little piece that needs to be glued. Now, it's not entirely necessary, but I have found that if this isn't glued onto the side of the magazine here, that there's a chance for it to separate a little bit and for a band to get trapped in there. So just to make sure that doesn't happen, we're gonna put a rod in, just almost flush, then put a little dollop of super glue So I mean the super glue wants to cooperate. Just a little bit on the outside. Oh, I'm gonna super glue my hands. It's important to make sure you don't get it on the rod itself. Just get it on here and then attach that. 
there. There, push that in and give that a second to set. And then it's assembly time. So we're gonna grab the magazine. Actually, I like doing it from the other side. Sorry, not the magazine, the rocker. Run the pin through one, then get the hammer, two, the now glued magazine. I'm actually gonna change the pin because often it gets a little bit of glue on the pin. This one needs to spin pretty freely. Oh, it's a bit sticky. I think some glue got into the interior. Just clean it out a bit. There we go, much better. Now this actually has a bit of a taper on it. Make sure the taper goes this way so it'll sit firmly and allow the band to release. There, nice and smooth. And then the trigger needs this tiny little rubber band here. Uh, this is just like a rubber band from supermarket packaging, but you can use any small rubber band as long as it's not too loose or too tight. I would say around 15 millimeters. Pull the hammer back and push that, whoop, missing the hole. Into place. And there we go, that is the mechanism. Oh yeah, right, there's no tension on here. Yeah, we need four size 16 bands or just small bands again. Going around here, gonna release the hammer, put them around the back. Can't believe I forgot about that. Then take this little bar, twist it one, two, three, and then put it at the back. It's not gonna hold very well right now, so I'll just hold it so I can show you the mechanism. So when you pull the hammer back, it cocks it on the trigger, and then when you pull the trigger, and so, oh yeah, the magazine here, the band is resting here, putting some forward tension on it. When you pull the trigger, the hammer goes forward, hits this rocker, rocks it forward, then the this is allowed to rotate half, releasing the, the uh, rubber band, then it bounces back and then locks itself again, ready to fire the next round. You pull the hammer back, wash, rinse, and repeat, nice and easy. So let's get the second half on here. This is all over the place. I'm gonna hold this in place. And now we're gonna play line up the pins. Something that rarely works on the first attempt. All right. So this uh, piece here, I often need to move that up so it falls in. Then get magazine, oh, the whole mechanism's a little up. Magazine in place, and then this is definitely the most annoying step of this whole thing. All right, we're gonna take this, rotate it, try and get that into the hole, there it goes. That into the hole, rotate that up, and oh, perfect. All right, I'm just gonna get this pin in and the trigger pin, which seems to there it goes, and da da, 99% done. The only thing we got to do from here is run in the screws. There, once you got it tight, release the barrel a little bit. Oh, sorry, release the screw that holds the barrel a little bit, insert the barrel, and then clamp it down. Why is this a thing? Well, let me show you. There is actually two other sizes of barrels. There is a medium size and a ridiculously long size, just in case you have long rubber bands or you need to shoot this all the way across the office. Oh, and one little part I didn't talk about is these little plugs. If you live in a place that, or in a situation where you want this to be labeled very safe, 
You can insert an orange barrel plug or print the barrel itself in red like I did. And if you want to make it really secure, there's two versions of it. One version actually has a little index here and a screw hole. So you can screw the barrel plug in, making it very difficult to remove. I'll leave that one to your discretion. Back at hand, insert that barrel, tighten down the screw, and then last thing we gotta do is put the grips on both sides, put the nut in one side very loosely, then take the screw and give it a bit of a push to start it and then go to the other side and tighten it up. This will grab that nut. Oh, we didn't push it quite enough in. There. This will grab the nut on the other side and pull it down into place. And that is it. We are done. Yeah, works perfect. Well, I don't know it works perfect. Let's see if it works perfect. Hmm. Shoot at the camera. Nice. And now just to make sure it is 100% functional, let's give it a full six shots. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Must be sick of watching me load it by now, but I am not sick of loading it. I love this mechanism. And one, two, three, oh. Oh, that, there we go. That one actually folded over a bit. <laughs> no fault of the mechanism, just sloppy loading. And six. And there you have it, a single action army rubber band gun. This stand is also included in the files in case you want to display it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I hope... Oh, oh hold on. Ah, I lost my foot pedal. Ah, there we go. Ah, there we go. Okay. So <laughs> again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope you'll consider giving it a like and subscribing to this channel. Until next time, have an awesome day. Goodbye.